Love love the new setup. Did you? I just put everything on the floor. <laughs> I was like, it looks terrible. Uh, you can still you can still see a stack of hard drives. <laughs> oh my god, are these? That's wow, cool. that's a lot of hard drives. <laughs> It's a good background, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I gotta get some chalk or something to write on that with. It's a great background. I think it's great. I don't know if anyone else is joining. Where's Sam? I don't know. It's too early for them, but let's go yeah. anyway. So so let's see here. So where were we? You know, we had a... I think I was the last one... To write a passing test and then I called it I said that's it you know all done let's see here if we can actually move forward from that let's see what are, what is today Wednesday oh my god where did the week go Week goes really fast yeah let's run all of this <laughs> let's go here let's see so we basically so here's what I'm say what is what I've been thinking I actually um, do we have enough today in these tests in terms of projection to kind of confirm that we um, we can support at least one scenario like I know in our projected tokens in here um, Let's call this projected tokens like that. Okay, so I know that in our projected tokens here, we can support a keyword uh, equal word space and equal. And we can also support like, okay, so select dollar sign, select equal name. And that would totally work. That would be totally fine. Okay, so so I'm gonna try to add another couple of things. What did we what did we want to call the comma? That little comma for the select statement. Like when you go and say, you know, okay, I want to do dollar sign select equal name, and then age like that. What did you want to call that comma? Just a comma. Yeah, until we have a better name for it. Um, I'm okay with that. Sounds it, good it's, too. It's a um, in that in that case, wouldn't it be like a collection separator or something. I I don't know what you would call it. Parameter separator. What uh, do you call it in a method? Like, are we just call them commas, right? Yeah, we'll just call them a comma. Yeah. Okay. So like, yeah. So between all the com, I don't know. I'm interested now to see if there's an official name for. That. Find it. Find it while I'm giving you a failing test. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Here we go. So now it found a word. And, well, this guy is still going to be a separator. But, and commas are separators, right? So a comma in here would be the the projected type out of this separator basically okay i guess it would be like a parameter separator parameter like, separator yeah because like the the where where i see it most common is in um with method parameters let's do it separator parameter separator. yeah that works I, don't, I was hoping. I, don't, I, I was really hoping we could find control. just. Can we find just one word for it instead of having two words? Let's just do comma for now. You sure? Okay. Yeah, we can um, change it later. Okay. With the comma, we can support extended select statements, which is great. Uh, and if we do that, then we can basically do things like, you know. Um, we can go where why did this guy pass hold on a second uh oh because it selected randomly but yeah it's not testing everything all the time it's selecting randomly a bunch of things to build statements that's right so sometimes it'll yeah. pass sometimes it'll fail that's right okay 
Cool, 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 cool. I just needed to fail one time, so I'm happy with 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 it. Let's see here. Comma, comma, separator. That's right. Okay. You know when the randomizer is so stubborn. What do I do? Yeah. I just I just go like this to control tilde, and I go and do hey let's go hardcore right. So then we go and say dot net test, and actually let it run completely independent. Yeah. What up, Wordy? Hey guys, sorry I'm a bit late. Very un-British of you. <laughs> I just I just had to unpick. Uh method that was 200 lines of code long yikes yeah it's not pretty <laughs> not pretty okay joe got it down fail okay. go my friend how's it looking it's looking great so here's what we're gonna do paul remember this whole thing that, that whole spiel that i did the other day about oh we're gonna do horizontal deliveries and whatnot we're gonna go through with the select statements t -t 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 -t, select statements all the yes. way up to the to the node service and then from the node service you know we're gonna try to uh, produce expressions and produce back o data queries oh i'm so excited about this we can we can make this work in like a maybe maybe so are even... you thinking each o data parameter is going to be like its own service stack essentially so like we're gonna have like a select service and a filter service. Maybe. A, yeah. But for, for, for the expressions, for the node, for the yeah, node, yeah. probably. And an orchestrator will be able to go and talk to them and say, hey, here's a statement. I, what, what are you gonna do with it? The interesting thing is that, oh man, this is gonna be really exciting because you're gonna basically send it to a select service and the select service will come back and says, here, I did all the select things, but there's filter in there. So go deal with it in the other filter service. We'll see. They've, we they've also got to be uh, recursive and interoperable as well. Because like if I have an expression, which is like an expand, then a select, uh -huh, the expand uh -huh. needs to be able to pass back up the chain and say, hey, can you run a select on this? Yes. It's going to be I, fun. <laughs> it's going to be. This, is, this, this will be the most um, intensive orchestration service that I've ever implemented. Uh, I can't wait to see what that would look like. Yeah, I'm curious as well because it's really going to push the limits of what like cul de sac, at, um, you know, is potentially capable of in terms of logical complexity. Because yeah. it's not like like most applications, you have like a path through the code, right? So you have yeah. like a HTTP endpoint or something and a controller action, yeah. and it just it's a straight chain through, and it might sort of fan out like a tree inside the code base, but you don't go kind of like down back up down back up down back up in order to produce one thing right mm -hmm. so yeah that's where the, the fun comes in <laughs> yeah I was, I was wondering about that because um we if we're going to have like um a service per kind of o data parameter that's where our extensibility comes in right because you can just yeah. bolt in more services as you see fit yeah um yeah it's it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be very so is, is the plan still to build the um, the O node and the, yeah. the hierarchy of nodes and then off the back of that process that into each I, service, I, right? I want to avoid that. I want to avoid that hierarchy piece. Right, I want to okay. avoid that tree. If we can do that, that would be great because that's true evolution in the problem solving. Otherwise, we're just moving code around from legacy O data to the O data Neo. Then what's the point? Just keep the date, the code in there. Um, I want to move away from that. I just don't know yet. That's the exciting thing about software engineering. You know, you don't know. You just come to work to do the things you don't know how to do. And the things that you know how to do, you automate, right? Yeah. Otherwise, but it's just busy work. You know it's what the I mean? life of a developer, isn't it? Is that you're constantly oh, yeah, doing something you have like no idea yeah. how to do. <laughs> <laughs> what was that, Joe? What I'm sorry that? for interrupting, but don't you have to know how to do the thing you're automating? Yeah, so the things that you know how, how to do, you automate, so you don't have to yeah. do them anymore. The things you don't know how to do, that's why you show up at work, you know? Yeah, you, you know be how like, to automate figure it out. things. That's, yeah. the, that's literally the job of a developer, is to automate things. Yeah. What you don't know is what the pain in the ass problem is going to be today that you've got to automate. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a new problem. <laughs> there, there are instances, however, where and this is very unfortunate but you know there are instances where 
you know, I remember having a discussion with someone who did procurement and, you know, he basically said to me something like, you know, the cost of just hiring a bunch of people, you know, to do the work manually would be a lot less than automating it. See, and that's, that's just, awful. yeah, that's, that's really just, that, that's why I don't like FinTech. You know, that's just short, <laughs> that's just, just, just really just, that's short term vision in its essence, because the people that you're going to hire, they can get sick, they can go away, prices go higher, you have inflation, so many things could happen you know, while you could just automate the thing and move on and it will always work for you and it will not take days off and it will just be fine, you know, but um, this is why I don't like, there's no common language between, between me and people who are, you know, you know, MBA people, these are not my, my so kind a, of people. <laughs> when a business leader says to me, you know, it would, that kind of statement, right? It would, it would cost more to have people just manually doing it than it would to automate that mm -hmm. tells me that they don't understand their business model well enough yeah because if they can't explain to a dev team what it is that they want so that mm -hmm. they can get a productive dev team out of that then mm -hmm. there is clearly a problem with the line of business that they're working in or yep. what it is that that company does yeah and i think often when i've found problems like that i've noticed that the main issue basically boils down to the rule is x unless it's a Sunday and the wind direction is easterly and then the rule is Y. Yeah. And because of that, no programmer would ever sort of <laughs> have any clue how to implement it. Right. So they're like, well, okay, if I sacrifice a goat and you know, <laughs> and then of course you end up in this like weird situation where like, like the business leader is saying to you almost every day, Oh, have you sacrificed your goat today? And it's like, no, this is not a standard business process. You, you've got to find a better way of doing this. And they just right. won't accept it because they're like, Oh, well, we've done it this way for years. It can't be wrong. Right. That's FinTech. Like we've written code in Fortran for years. What could be wrong with that? <laughs> no! Yeah, that's, that's about right. My friend. Yeah, I, I don't know about that. I, I don't, you know, that this is why, you know, I mean, you know, it's it's huge, just a huge advantage, you know, to work in a place where, you know, the leaders are actually engineers as well. They're writing code, you know, otherwise, you know, how are you going to find a common language? Joe, what happened? Did it fail? Uh, we got a passing test now. Okay, now we need a failing test, right? Yep. So That's how it works. All right, let's go look at our failing. Are we just adding more operators and stuff? Yeah, oh, just, okay. a just a couple more. Yeah, so we can do select equals. We got um, properties and the comma. It seems like we have enough that you can run a full select through if you want, Hassan. Okay, now that we have that, let's let's switch real quick into a design session really quick right you have okay. everything so so here's the deal joe and then you know we will circle back to let me just find o data let's see here so i can't remember did we do the um literal combination stuff or is that that needs to be done in here doesn't it it, it will but you know remember the strategy that i'm trying to talk about just poke a hole horizontally through the system yeah that'll Get be our Dude, do you, do you understand if I go out there and say, here's an alpha release of OData Neo that will have you pass in OData, run it on console, gRPC, run it on whatever you want to run it, and it'll just work. The one thing I'm really here for is the transcendence piece. Uh -huh. The transcendence piece is the most important part, you know, but there's a lot more than that. There's transcendence, technology agnostic. You know, all that kind of thing. Okay, let's just think through this one. Okay, so here's the flow. So we have the tokenization service. That's great. And then we have the projection service. And then we need a better name for O-Node service. I don't want to say O-Node service. That's kind of weird. You know, we need to find... Joe, you're good with these names. So there's tokenization and there's projection. What's the f what's What do you want to call the third one? Notification. A model builder. Notification? <laughs> Notification. Is it node ification? I think it's an A. Model builder works too. No, I, but I was it, thinking it's a model service. But, but there's building our own but there's no rhythm to it. It needs to be Asian. Since you started with Asian, you know, intellectual invasion. 
You know, we are the nation of domination for every nation. I don't know. I'm, I don't know what I'm saying. But what's a good name, you guys? So... Saturation? <laughs> um, I mean, is, is modelization or modelation a word? <laughs> <sighs> It's the nodation service. <laughs> See, the hardest part, just naming things. You know, always, you just run into these things and say, what should I call it? I know what it needs to do, but I just don't know what should I call it. You know. Now, now you see why I was saying that. Like, you go back to business leaders and they can't explain the problem. This yep. is the problem. They suffer every day. They just don't yep. know what to call anything. So they go, <laughs> just figure it out, right? You're a dev. <laughs> Aren't you the smart guy? What do you do, <laughs> IT? Yeah. My, You're my the friend... guy that solves the problems, not <laughs> my... me. <laughs> <laughs> my, pr my printer is not working. Can you hack Facebook? Um, Wasn't that what? post on the on the group earlier on the week? Something about, but just because I'm a programmer doesn't mean I can fix your printer. I mean, I can yep. fix your printer, can, but, but just because I'm a programmer. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here's what I know. I'm, I'll just say X service in here, and we'll think about a name for it. But you know, what's going to happen is that you have this query, string query, coming in through this um, uh, orchestration service. And your query is coming in as dollar sign select equal name, right? And it's gonna go here. It's gonna get tokenized. It's gonna get projected, and then it's gonna get. Um, I'll call it. Do I call it translation transformation service? How about that? It also needs to have something about O data in it, right? So O data. Uh, oh, data service. That How about that? Okay. So, so what what is that service planned to do? Is it just going to produce the O node, or is it actually then going to process that? Ah, so this one is the one that is supposed to take in. It needs to produce a public, unified model, that is convertible into expressions, SQL statements, O data statements, one for one, just like that. Like, ideally, whatever comes out of this guy, let's just call it uh, an O data, let's call it X object. Whatever comes out of this guy here, O object, this guy needs to be easily one to one translatable into whatever we want. It could be back to an O data expression or a link expression one for one like that just literally transferring one for one because down the road what's going to happen paul is that we're going to go and say give me a new orchestration service in here and this orchestration service this one will be called expression service this one will be called raw uh, query service this one will be called sql statements service and this orchestration server will take whatever comes out of this guy in some coordination it will take whatever comes out of here and put it right here and produce whatever the the original request wanted right so it's say here's here's a raw query oh data query give me back an expression or so, give so me this back is what a... makes me think that much like say expression trees or sql queries or you know other kinds of queries it uh -huh. is a tree-like structure that we've got that's why i thought you know w when we were looking at own nodes yeah we, we were going oh, okay you could just j jsonify right you could you know stringify then effectively your um your json node structure and then you could deserialize that back into whatever system wanted to process that so then if you ended up with something like an expression service in theory um, a hierarchy would translate well to an expression tree but a hierarchy would also translate well to a sql query but you could also say that a hierarchy would also translate well to say graphql mm. because you know graphql is basically the json definition of a query as well isn't it yeah so depending on how these things were kind of like written out I, I agree. I mean, I agree. You know, we just need to. This need. So, okay. Do you agree that this needs to produce a universal model that's translatable? 
<clears throat> into anything we want. It's basically yeah. the OCAD instructions. Yeah. And then at some point, some data service is going to convert that to whatever the, the data system is, whether it be SQL, it could be another service, it could be anything. Exactly. And, and whatever this is, like in our, in our select statement, it's so easy. We'll just take it and say something to the effect of, we will name it, right? It will be O node type select, you know, type property, type equal, type value, type all of that kind of stuff. That will be that O node, right? Or we could just call it O data, like the O data object, you know, um, or O object, something like that. Uh, and then that O object can come down all the way up from here and then get passed into whatever we want to pass it to and convert it into whatever. So ideally what I'm expecting that model to look like is you're basically taking in, let's go back here. Let's see, this is very exciting. We're actually producing something. Um, let's see. So this guy here will be like, this is the object that's coming in. This is in here, that's our uh, projected token. So the projected token has a projected type that says this is a parameter and the raw data, raw value. What did we call it, Joe? Raw value? Probably. Select, Probably. right? And this guy here will say uh, uh, O token yeah, type. Yeah, raw, raw value. Okay. O token type is, we called it a word, right? Now, this guy will be converted into O object. And this O object, we, we could find a better name for it. This O object will actually go and say, wait a second. No, I'm going to produce a flat tree, a, a flat list that is a, a, it's still keeping the raw value and all that. But what it's actually doing is that it's going and saying, hey, there's also the O data type. And that's, select statement something like that right so that select statement is basically what um what what anything else can take downstream now on this all object we need to figure out a way where we can make it a flat line like just a, a an array the, you know the the problem with that idea is that we were talking about having like something like values in here which is an array of objects and in that array of objects there's also o objects underneath that and these o objects are the values that are containerized within that select statement that's the tree model that's what o data is today can we flatten it so i think that that's what queries are today that's that's why i think we started with nodes and and having hierarchy can I we, could be wrong. <laughs> can we do it without a hierarchy? Uh, can we define a query without hierarchy? Probably, but we're going to have to process it hierarchically anyway, aren't we? Yeah, like if, if in our minds we can do something like this, select name, right, and age, and then inside, let's see, an address, and then inside of address you can go and say select a street like this, it's flat it's 2d well it it sort of is but you've got the first level but you can't process the first level until you process the second level right so you, you've got to process the select equal street inside address and then inject that into the result of the outer select in order to build the final result so I, you have I selected there. everything and then filtered the data to street but that's not optimum that's a horrible solution because that means you're going to pick up 190 properties and then only later after you pulled the data. No, I understand. No, no, I mean like building the expression tree. Um, if you think about like kind of what you're building as, as an end result, I'm taking an expression tree as an example, but you could say the same for SQL, right? Yeah. So if, I, if I'm building a sub select, I have the inner select and then the outer select. I build the inner select and I inject that into my outer select. Yep. 
and I end up with my full query formed from that, if that makes sense. So, yep. so because of that, I am, by definition, building something that is hierarchical. That, that was my understanding. I, I could be wrong. I know that you can read it kind of like, you know, a sentence effectively and treat it like a flat thing. But, but that's because our brain code, is doing, yeah, that's because our brains are doing a little bit of work that's very subtle and fast. Yeah. You know. And I think in code, we don't get that subtlety and fast things just handed to us on a plate, if you know what I mean. We have to explicitly define it. So that's where the hierarchy comes from, for me anyway. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> No, I know where you're coming from. I think this comes back to when you were talking about like um, regex and like mm -hmm. phone numbers. Do you remember we had this inference where we would say, okay, what is a phone number? It's like an area code and the number. Mm -hmm. But we, we implicitly know what an area code is, right? But actually, that's not intuitive to a computer. You then have to define mm -hmm. what area code means. Mm -hmm. You know? So because of that kind of natural intuitiveness that we have in in our brains we're able to sort of skip some of the steps you just can't do that in code also also our code like our brains are doing three things they're doing purposing and operations and data like you're going and looking in memory what the, does that look like while we're here just relying on operations with no purpose and data so that's why like i thought a lot about that time we called dan on the phone and i thought like Wait a second, he's looking up his memory as well. He's he doesn't like have a bunch of rules. He's going like this and be like, well, as soon as he said well, that's him searching in the database, you know, and trying to find some answers, right? So it's uh, hard. And look to... at all the steps that he skipped as well, and all the yeah. assertions that he just kind of made outright. And we were like, whoa, 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 but the code can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> and there's also more to it than that. Like, he's talking to me. So in his head, oh, this guy actually writes code. So I don't need to explain to him what, you know, one, two, three, four steps are. I'm just going to skip through these. Yeah. Right. So there's so much stuff in the brain processing that's beyond. Is he in a good mood? Is he in a bad mood? Are, is he sitting in front of a computer? Can he call an external dependency and talk to the internet through his computer to kind of get some? Oh, it's 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 a whole party, you know, just for one single question like that. But anyway, the bottom line is, I guess the assignment here, something just talk about on Friday, is can we can we actually express a query without hierarchy? That's you just pushing that boundary of innovation, right? I think an OData query is that, though, isn't it? Because you're, you're basically saying, here's a flat string. But actually unpacking it, you realize that what you're unpacking isn't, isn't flat. I could be wrong. Unless there so, is a better way to write queries. That no, no you're, no, you're right. And you're basically... We basically want to translate whatever comes from it. That's that's the purpose part. You know, we want to go and say dot name, student dot age, you know, and you guys basically going and saying student dot address dot street. That's basically what this translates to. Yeah, or yeah. select. Actually, the smart way to look at this, right, is rewrite mm -hmm. your original OData query without mm -hmm. the brackets. Mm -hmm. and then you'll have something that's not hierarchical and i don't yep. think you can I, I literally so don't think you, can. you you in my head i keep getting the um what's the property in multiplication where you can um, carry mm. through um so basically you could write this as select equals name select equals age select equals address dot street mm -hmm. and now it's a flat list yeah. Let's let's try it together on Friday. Let's actually try to implement it because that's what that's the service going to be working on. We're going to turn it into this and then pick up all of these little array of statements and try to turn them into what should we start with? We could start with a SQL statement like this. It's going to be really interesting. Yeah. If we can produce SQL statement from the other side, that's something that you can spit out to entity framework, dapper, whatever. Joe, sure, I was actually uh, thinking about this. Because um, you remember we had that discussion about like where does iQueryable go? Yep. 
like and the fact that we pass i, I query was up through our stack and it yeah. basically encapsulated in that is some ef magic basically that takes place it, it's it's the nastiest subtlest way that a team can sneak in external leakage into my core business logic without me being able to get rid of it yeah and i think if we can get to this level of like smarts we can literally just say here's a string give me back a result from the broker <laughs> but you know you know we can always like our library could always have like an extension on top of the string where we save data somewhere but yeah. i do i even like that i mean it's smart it, what sort of like my variables smart. provider inside yeah. a string extension <laughs> for who <Dude. laughs> I mean, I mean. By the way, I think converting it to a an expression tree is truly one way we can do this. And when the expression tree reaches all the way down to the broker, the broker will flip it back through OData Neo into whatever provider it wants to work with. Yeah. But let's just get to that transcendence piece. Let, let's play with SQL statements. So we're gonna produce this. And try to pick up that statement and produce SQL. So it starts with easy things and then complicate as we go. Hmm. What's more important to me than all of this is that I want to see if, well, I know that it's going to work, but I want to show the world that working horizontally and getting one thing at a time out of the box, you know, is going to, it works. Actually gets you out the door. And you how know. that from a simple set of rules, you can build a lot of complexity. Conway's game of life. Conway's game of life. Yeah. Anyway, thank you both for hopping in today. You know, I don't know where Sam is, but hopefully he'll watch this and we'll we'll reconvene on Freud Day. And you know, just you know, keep on keeping on. Something to think about. I think it's going to be very straightforward, especially for the select statements. But we'll see where it goes. Cool. Yes, I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you so much. <laughs> Take care. Bye.